This presentation is about lymph node imaging. These are my disclosures. When do we perform lymph node assessment? According to the EAU guidelines in prostate cancer, we should perform a lymph node staging in patients with intermediate and high risk. That is a PSA above 10, or a Gleason above six, or a stage of T3 and higher. That means that the risk of having positive lymph nodes is more than 10%. How do we perform lymph node staging? According to the same guidelines, the gold standard is open or laparoscopic superextended lymphadenectomy. However, 13% of lymph nodes are not detected by superextended lymph node dissection. Furthermore, recent data from our group shows that the surgeon does not detect 83% of the positive lymph nodes. Furthermore, long-term outcome of salvage lymph node dissection has shown that there is no therapeutic effect. Thus, surgical staging and surgical exploration plays a minor role and imaging plays a major role. This is why this talk is about imaging of lymph nodes. I will start with the importance of lymph node imaging. Then I will show how to make MRI of lymph nodes, what planes should we use. I will discuss a bit about anatomy and finally, functional techniques. So the importance of lymph node imaging. It is for the patient crucial to be or not to be. That is the question. So indeed, if you have only a few positive nodes, your survival rate after 10 years is a lot higher, 70% as compared when you have more positive lymph nodes. You can see that with five or more lymph nodes, your survival rate decreases. So detecting lymph node metastasis is important for prognosis. Also, it's important for therapy. If you see a node here in the common iliac region, which is positive, the local stage is not important anymore because prostatectomy is not a curative option anymore. Two, how should we perform lymph node imaging on MRI? Beside the axial plane, the sagittal or obturator plane can be very useful. The sagittal plane should be parallel to the psoas muscle. Then you have the so-called obturator fossa plane which shows you the muscle here and the internal iliac vessels there and the obturator nerve. And in the triangle between the psoas muscle or the external iliac vessels and the obturator nerve is the so-called obturator fossa, where in this case, there is a positive lymph node. And this is one of the most important surgical areas as I will show in a few minutes. Again, you see the vessel bright here, external iliac vein. And this line is the obturator nerve. And the area dorsal to this vein and around the obturator nerve is the so-called obturator fossa. You can see the obturator fossa over here in the drawing. And again, this node is in the fossa. Now, anterior to the obturator fossa, you have the region of the external iliac. The external iliac is also a region that the surgeon is usually explorating. Dorsal to the obturator nerve is the internal iliac region. And this is a region which is rather difficult because there are a lot of vessels which can cause bleeding. So this is usually an area that is less frequently explored. Then cranially to the iliac bifurcation, you have the common iliac region. So external 
obturator, internal and common. You see in a schematic drawing this again in the same way. This is the common iliac plane, the blue area, light blue. Then you have in orange external iliac. You have in yellow obturator, in green internal iliac. And then you have over here the presacral region. And down in the pelvis beside the presacral region, you have the perirectal region. Finally, here above, you have the paraaortic region. Now, to determine the level of your axial images, a coronal localizer is very helpful. So, let's do an exercise. You see here the aortic bifurcation. You see the aortic is just branching here. This is still the inferior cable vein. Now, if you go slightly below this level, you are in the area of the common iliac vessels, right over here. And what is this area? This area is the internal, sorry, the common iliac region. Now, if you go down to the level of the iliac bifurcation, external and internal, you see below this level various regions. These are the external iliac vessels and the internal iliac vessels. And here you have the obturator nerve. Now, what is this region? This region is region number two. This is the external iliac region. This region over here around the obturator nerve is the obturator fossa, this region. Now it's quite easy, isn't it? This area here is the internal iliac region. Yes. Then finally over here, we have the pre-sacral region. You can see it over there. So external, obturator, internal and pre-sacral. You can see that it is quite complicated on the axial image. Now on the sagittal image, it's easier. This is external and this this is obturator. And this region here, this is internal. And this region over here is the presacral region. And finally here, the common iliac. Again, all regions together. Now, besides anatomical images, diffusion-weighted images are important, and we are using a low B value and a high B value, and I will show you why. There is a lymph node which is rather large in this image, and it's over here. So where is this located, and in what region? It is just beside the aortic bifurcation, so it's common iliac, common iliac region. Now, if we make a diffusion weighted image, you can see that it increases in signal in the high B value. So this means that there is restriction. When there is fluid, you can see it decreases. So when the node increases, you should be very careful. It can be pathologic. Three, I would now like to talk about anatomy. What about the size of this lymph node? This is a big lymph node. Where is it located? It is located in, well, let's look for this vessel, external iliac, and here are some internal iliac vessels. So this is obturator fossa. What about this lymph node? This is located anterior to the common iliac vessels. So this is in the common iliac region. And this has a size of five millimeters, which is according to size and shape criteria. It is a round lymph node. It's smaller than eight millimeters. So this is not pathologic. However, it turned to be malignant. And this lymph node over here, where is it located? It is located in the common iliac region. This is a six millimeter lymph node. 
which also appear to be malignant. So small lymph nodes can be pathologic. This is a normal lymph node size, the malignant lymph node size, and you can see that there is a significant overlap. Below eight millimeters, lymph nodes can be pathologic. This is again the size of metastatic lymph nodes. You can see it is below five millimeters, quite significant. Not all tumors have small lymph node metastasis. Urinary bladder and testis tumor, testicular cancer do have large lymph nodes when they are metastatic. Whereas rectum and prostate, they have small lymph node metastasis. So in prostate cancer, 70% of all the metastatic lymph nodes are smaller than five millimeters. Here you can see a schematic drawing. These are the lymph nodes in prostate cancer. And you can see that, that sorry, the lymph node metastasis, you can see that the metastasis, indeed, most of them are smaller than five millimeters. Now with conventional CT, we can detect these lymph nodes, the large ones, larger than eight millimeter, pathologic. With PET-CT and diffusion MRI, as I will show in a few minutes, you can detect the lymph nodes as of four to five millimeter in size. And the small ones you can detect with nano MRI. And you can see that quite a significant number of lymph node metastasis in prostate cancer are indeed smaller than five millimeters. Now, what about size? If we use the size criteria of 10 millimeters, minimal axial size of cut, as cutoff sign of being metastatic, you can see that the, this threshold results in a false negative rate of 63%, which is quite significant. Specificity good, but sensitivity really very bad. Lymph nodes are located along the vessels. This is a surgical publication, a radiotherapy publication, and a radiological publication. So lymph nodes follow vessels, and that's quite useful. Now the pathways of spread, the most common pathway of spread is anterior to the obturator nerve, as you can see over here. Metastasis goes from the obturator fossa to the common iliac plane, and from there to the paraaortic plane. So these lymph nodes over here, just along the external iliac vessels and slightly dorsal to it, are in the obturator and external iliac plane. And this is the first station of metastasis in prostate cancer. Now, a less known pathway of spread, but important to know is the dorsal route, which is from the internal iliac to the perirectal and presacral, and from there behind the common iliac vessels to the left paraaortic region. And only because of this knowledge, you can detect a lymph node. A patient with a prostatectomy and lymph node dissection developed an increase of PSA, and this was reported as negative. Now, where are the obturator nerves? They are here. And if you now look at the dorsal root, so the internal iliac area, you can see that here something is happening. And after a few years, you can see that this lymph node indeed has grown and was pathologic. Internal iliac lymph node. Now from the internal iliac area, it goes to the presacral region over here. From there, it goes dorsal to the common iliac vessels, dorsal to the common iliac vessels. And from there, it goes to the left paraaortic area and here to the right paraaortic area. So the dorsal pathway of spread. Again, the spread of prostate cancer is variable, so there is no single sentinel lymph node. This is external iliac, followed by obturator, followed by internal iliac, 
followed by perirectal, followed by presacral, followed by dorsal to common iliac. You can see that an obturated lymph node dissection misses about 40% of lymph nodes. 60% are being detected and the rest external, internal and presacral and pararectal, common iliac and paraortic, they are all missed. Now recent study have shown that even more lymph nodes are not being detected especially the small ones. A preoperative nano MRI showed a tiny lymph node over here in the obturator fossa. Surgery was performed and after surgery, PSA didn't go down. And you can see that here, this lymph node after surgery was still there and has grown. Also, a lot of lymph nodes are outside of the external beam radiotherapy field, 43%. So they are missed with standard radiotherapy to the pelvis. Now, pathways of spread and rectal cancer are a little bit different. You have the upper pathway along the mesenteric vessels. The middle ones, they are in the perirectal space in the mesorectum and the lower one that they also go to the mesorectum. You can see here some lymph nodes in the mesorectum, which this actually is outside of the mesorectum. And the number of location of nodes are important for management, as I will show you. If a node is touching the mesorectum, the local recurrence rate and mortality increases. So this is a very unfavorable um, factor. You can see that most of the lymph nodes are in proximity of the tumor within two or five centimeters. And no nodes usually are seen inferior to the tumor. So the flow is from the tumor cranially to the rest of the abdomen. Now, the nodal contour and the um, homogeneity of lymph nodes is important. If you have an irregular contour, the chance of being metastatic is very high. You can see that if there is no extra nodal spread, local control and metastatic free survival is quite acceptable. And this goes down enormously when there is extra nodal spread. So it is a very important prognostic factor. Here you can see an irregular lymph node, extra neural disease, as you can see here on the histopathology. This is also a slightly irregular lymph node on this side, and it has a very bad prognosis. Inhomogeneous, slightly irregular, as you can see, this is a malignant lymph node. When it is a homogeneous, smooth lymph node, it is usually in rectal cancer benign. Now, the signal intensity also is important. If the signal intensity is inhomogeneous, the chance of metastasis is higher. You see a smooth lymph node is not that much positive in only 6%. If it is an irregular lymph node, it goes up to 92%. And the same applies for mixed signal intensity, inhomogeneity. You can see that the lymph node chance of being metastatic goes up from 4 to 91%. Now, central necrosis is sometimes seen in cervical cancer, and this is a sign with a very high positive predictive value. So those lymph nodes, mostly all of the time, are being pathologic. You can see also lymph nodes which are cystic with calcification. They usually also are malignant. Um, you sometimes have problem with bowel loops. Is it a bowel loop or a lymph node? Well, you should just use the other plane. And you can see that this is a pathologic lymph node. You can also see some normal structures. Lymph nodes are outside of the peritoneum. So they are just outside of the peritoneal cavity. 
And this one is inside of the perivineal cavity, medial to the external and internal iliac vessels. And this actually is a cystic ovary in this female patient. Here you see a false positive sign. This is an abscess. And here you see a lymphocele. Sometimes you have a coincidental mass like this one here. This is a schwannoma. Four, we do have problems with current lymph node diagnosis. Most of the lymph nodes are smaller than five millimeters. So they are false negative. Most of the small lymph nodes are not detected by imaging. Some of the lymph nodes are not detected even with super extended lymph node dissection. And a significant number of lymph nodes are outside of the radiotherapy standard field. So we are looking for functional techniques, diffusion MRI, iron oxide particle MRI, and PET-CT. Let's start with diffusion MRI. You can see here a small lymph node in the pre sacral region. This lymph node on the B800 has a high signal and therefore decreased diffusion and appeared to be pathologic. Now, Tooney showed in a study with multiple B values and multiple readers, looking at small lymph nodes, that the sensitivity and specificity was quite good. However, a lot of lymph nodes smaller than three millimeters were still being missed. So this is a good technique, but not really a very sensitive technique. So what can we do beside conventional imaging and diffusion weighted imaging? Nano MRI. Nano MRI is an MRI performed 24 hours after slow drip infusion of iron oxide particles that are covered with a dextran, a sugar, 20 nanomillimeter particles, diluted in saline, slow drip infusion during half an hour, and then you see an MRA of the body, which is quite good. This is an MRA meat made 24 hours after infusion. You can see very nice arterial and venous vessels. The same you can do with the pelvis and you can see that the resolution of vessels is even better and that these vessels are a very important landmark for the surgeon because you can plot the pathologic and the normal lymph nodes in relation to the vessels. Now, after slow drip infusion, the iron is being phagocytoted by the macrophages. So the macrophages after 24 hours are full of iron. They go to lymphatic tissue. So let's magnify this area. This is a metastasis and this is an area full of iron loaded macrophages and iron on MRI is black. Therefore the metastasis can be seen as a white structure and the normal lymph node turns black. So instead of white, white, it becomes white metastatic and black bad. Now, one of those stars is pathologic. Which one? Just give iron oxide particles and you will see that only the bright one with is metastatic will shine up. And the rest really gets dark. And you can do the same with MRI. Which star is positive? Well, actually this one is the negative one and here you can see the positive one. I will go back. You can see here, this is a node, this is a node, this is negative, this is positive. After this iron oxide particle infusion, it's quite easy. This is a small lymph node, it's going down to 1.5 millimeters in the area behind the common iliac vessels. It's above the level of the iliac bifurcation. So this is the common iliac region. A positive lymph node, a small dot here and a small dot on the other plane. So this is not a vessel, but a node. Now, if you look at the sensitivity and specificity before the contrast injection and after, you can see 
that without the nano MRI, you have the expected sensitivity of 39%, and this increases to 90% with even a better specificity because enlarged normal nodes turn black. Now, if you look at prostate cancer, you can see that the pooled sensitivity is 88 and the pooled specificity is 93%, which is quite good. But this contrast is not yet available. It probably will take another two years before it will be. Now, PSMA PET-CT. PSMA is a protein that preferably goes to prostate cancer. So prostate cancer lights up if the protein is being bound by 68 gallium. And Budos in the Martini Clinicum in Germany performed a study and he showed a very good specificity. However, there was a problem because the smallest lymph node he could find was only four millimeters. So smaller, which is a significant amount of positive lymph nodes in prostate cancer were not being detected with this technique. This is an example. There is no positive lymph node. However, nano MRI shows here a tiny lymph node, 1.5 millimeter, which retrospectively takes up a little bit of tracer, but this is below the SUV for cancer. This is a plot which shows the nodal size of nodes detected with nano MRI, positive nodes, and here the metastasis are shown with the gallium PSMA. And you can see that with gallium PSMA, a lot of lymph nodes are not being found, which are pathologic, especially the smaller ones. Now here you see a lymph node metastasis in the thorax, which can be detected with this technique. Now to summarize, lymph node imaging is important for prognosis and the choice of therapy. It really helps this man to be or not to be. That is his question. Second, extended lymph node dissection, conventional imaging and conventional MRI do have significant limitations. Why? Because a lot of lymph node metastases, especially in rectal and prostate cancer are small. So they go undetected using conventional imaging. Until now, without sophisticated techniques, diffusion MRI is the best. Nano MRI will take another two years before regularly approval, but it will soon be there. Finally, we should look for specific PET traces, for example, PSMA, PET-CT for prostate cancer. With this, I thank you for your attention and perhaps you have some questions for me. Thank you very much.